This week on Council Bluffs News, Lust Fest 2017, city officials announced the lineup for Memorial Day weekend events. Find out what to expect from Tom Hannafin's River's Edge Park. With St. Patrick's Day just around the corner, we take a look at how the Council Bluffs Public Library is celebrating bagpipes on National Bagpipe Day. Plus, it's almost time for March Madness, but one region nonprofit has a madness of their own. Find out how deaf athletes from nine different states come together for a unique tournament experience. And Carla Hartenhoff with Thomas Jefferson High School joins us in studio to speak about an upcoming college fair for all Southwest Iowa students grades 8 through 12. That and more all on this week's Council Bluffs News. Welcome to this week's Council Bluffs News. I'm Aaron Zach. It's become an annual tradition for the city of Council Bluffs to host a big party during Memorial Day weekend. Lust Fest returns to Tom Hannafin Rivers Edge Park for a fifth year in 2017. And city officials make the big announcement as to who will headline the free concert and what other events will take place as part of the yearly bash. An annual celebration continues. I think it's a great thing for the entire region. And the band who will headline at center stage. Three, two, one. Cue the spot and drop the banner. City officials and the Iowa West Foundation make the big announcement March 8th to let the public know what's in store on Memorial Day weekend. We think it's a great year. We're doing some different things this year that I think uh, the public will react very positively to. We have some new sponsors and some great, great old sponsors. This year's Lust Fest is set to take place at Tom Hannafin's Rivers Edge Park May 26th through the 29th, making the fifth year of the celebration. I think people love the event. It's uh, an event that's made free through the donations of different uh, sponsors, so families can come out and celebrate uh, all together as a family. And they seem to come out in droves. The annual festival has drawn more than 130,000 people in its first four years. I think that uh, it's become part of people's Memorial Day tradition. At this point, they come out and enjoy the show. From KC and the Sunshine Band to the Fireworks for Freedom, this year's celebration seems to have it all, including some new attractions. Yeah, the big thing I think this year, we've had a lot of people talk to us about having a country event, and so we have uh, uh, Saturday night is going to be the country event, uh, and, and that has two or three different artists, including Trent Lockhart, the current American Idol uh, winner. <laughs> The 85-acre recreational area located at the foot of the Bob Carey Pedestrian Bridge has hosted numerous acts, such as the Beach Boys, Three Dog Night, and the Omaha Symphony. Officials say it's become a perfect location for events like this. We have a great venue, and, and being on the river draws people, and, and it's not, this isn't a Council Bluffs event, it's really a regional event. According to LustFest.com, the annual celebration was created to celebrate all things great happening in Council Bluffs, but it's also a great way to begin the summer. School's not quite out, but it's about a week away, and so the, the kids are excited for summer, and that long Memorial Day weekend traditionally is people's kickoff to their summer, and so uh, what better way to kick it off than with Lowe's Fest uh, 2017. The full weekend of fun events for the whole family also includes a Run Lust Half Marathon and 5K, Bike the Bluffs, the famous Omaha Symphony will perform, and of course fireworks will light up the sky. And that's just only a portion of all the excitement. For a complete list, visit LustFest.com. Council Bluffs is giving new life to an old trail. The East Manawa Drive Trail is closed for construction due to new development in the area. Terry Hoffman, Project Development Director for the Parks and Rec Department at Council Bluffs, has been taking many calls regarding the trails. Uh, we're getting into the biking season, so people are calling and asking about where we have closures and, 
if things have reopened yet. So it, it's a topic of conversation for the people that do use the trails. Detours will be marked around the construction sites. Trail availability is expected to be impacted through March 23rd. Lake Manawa Trail is also undergoing some renovations near the tank farm. That work is expected to be completed within the next month. 1996, that was the last year bagpipes were considered instruments of war. Now this Omaha group wants to teach the people in Council Bluffs all about the pipes. IWTV student Bowen Peterson has the story. It's been a long-standing tradition. We've been giving free bagpipe lessons and drumming lessons, Highland bagpipe lessons and drumming lessons for since 1970. In honor of National Bagpipe Day, this group wants to give some background information on bagpipes. As a precursor to next week's St. Patrick's Day to give a demonstration of the, high, the Highland bagpipes, give a little background information about how the pipes work, the different types of pipes. Pete Heineman, who has been with Omaha Pipes and Drums and playing bagpipes for 17 years, says, hopefully, people will want to learn how to play the pipes. It's, it's amazing what just nine notes can produce. It's the variety, because you can play marches, strass bays, reels, jigs, hornpipes, pibra, classical, traditional. Uh, it's the variety of the tunes that you can get. The free lessons can be started at any time. Lessons are offered, again, beginning at 8 o'clock on Saturday mornings at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. For more information on lessons, competitions, and concerts that the Omaha Pipes and Drums have, go to omahapipesanddrums.org. For the Council Bluffs News, I'm Bowen Peterson. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. The redevelopment and beautification of West Broadway is now underway. That begins our coverage in News Around the Bluffs. Segment one of the West Broadway reconstruction plan has officially started. The five-year-long process starts Monday, March 13th. Crews started working from 36th through 32nd Street in cold, snowy conditions. Mayor Matt Walsh says the change is long overdue. It's been um, needed to be rebuilt for probably the last 20 years at least. Um, the other thing that people don't realize is there is no storm sewer on West Broadway. West Broadway is about 10,000 feet and 36th through 32nd is about 2,000 feet. For more information and updates on the beautification of West Broadway, visit wbreconstruction.com. Council Bluffs announces phase three of their Blink program, bringing more free Wi-Fi to the community. Blink enters phase three, which means a new area in Council Bluffs will soon get access to the Blink network and free Wi-Fi. Some of the new hotspots include Thomas Jefferson High School and the Canesville Alternative Learning Center. The following area highlighted in green represents the new area to be covered by Blink in Phase 3. Areas like Bayless Park, the library, 100 block, and three elementary schools are already active hotspots. Mayor Matt Walsh also says no taxpayer dollars will directly pay for Blink. Funding sources were Google and then the iOS Foundation and that was on phase three. Phase one and two, in addition to Google and iOS Foundation, the Lakin Foundation was also a, a financial contributor. Blink will provide free Wi-Fi for basic web browsing. It's not meant to replace your home Wi-Fi and can't support video streaming. Since Blink has been a successful project, many students in school are able to work at home and finish their homework at a decent time. To learn more about Blink, you can visit blinkwifi.org. They're the people behind the scenes helping to mold the minds of the future. They often don't get enough credit, but this week, they're a front and center. Teachers and staff from all over are being recognized for their hard work. Their time and dedication to the students goes unrecognized at times. Joel Bettenhoff, principal of the school, shares his thoughts of what teachers have to do to make sure students get the proper education they need. It starts with relationships. One of the things that the teachers throughout the Lewis Central School District and Lewis Central High School do is they build really strong relationships with, with students. We're, we're a large school, but yet we're small enough that we can build uh, really strong relationships with students and families. 
Joe also said that working at Lewis Central has been one of the best experiences he's ever had. So next time you see a teacher, go up and thank them for all their hard work. To learn more about LC, head to their website at lchs.lewiscentral.org. Still to come on Council Bluffs News, hear how basketball is helping connect people in the deaf community at the 72nd Annual Mad Basketball Tournament. Plus, it's officially Lent season and that means churches are hosting fish fries. We head out to the Queen of Apostles Catholic Church to see some delicious food. But coming up next, Carla Hartenhoff joins us in studio to speak on an upcoming college fair that'll benefit students grades 8 through 12. Stay tuned. We asked a group of employees what makes our bank special, and here's what they said. We're available to answer customer questions as quickly as possible. We're available to help our community grow. We are available to explain the benefits of electronic banking. We're available to teach your kids financial literacy. We are available to help our local businesses grow and prosper. We're available to turn your dream of home ownership into reality. We're available to help our ag customers keep a family tradition alive. We're available to make decisions right here and right now. Being available to our customers and communities is not only what ties us together, but also what you want most from your financial institution. And our new name says just that. Welcome to Avela Bank. You'll see that new name when you access our website and your online banking account. You'll see the name on brochures, advertisements, receipts, even on the bank employees you have come to rely on. And within a month, you'll see it on our buildings. This is a big change, but rest assured, this is the only change we're implementing. We're still the same people in the same locations with the same management and same ownership. And of course, the same commitment to be available to you and our communities. And that, quite simply, is why we're proud to say, we're Avela. We are 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 Avela. We're Avela. We're Avela. Welcome back to Council Bluffs News. I'm Aaron Zach. Joining me in studio today is Carla Hartenhoff. She is the counselor for the Thomas Jefferson High School and the lead organi organizer for the upcoming college fair. Carla, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me today. As always, Council Bluffs Schools is the always looks out for their students and they want to promote good education. Mm -hmm. Why is that? I think our goal is to make sure that all students come out of high school being prepared for whatever the post-secondary option is, whether that's going to college, whether that's going straight to the world of work, internships, whatever the case may be, we want to prepare them to be successful whatever their uh, career path is. And you have an event coming up at Thomas Jefferson in the next few weeks. Talk about that. We absolutely do. We have this awesome epic event called College Crossroads. Um, we have geared it towards allowing students to get information for where they're at in the college and career planning process. So we are staging this for students in grades 8 through 11th and some 12th graders if they're still trying to finish up some post-secondary plans. Um, but not only do we have, we have a college fair, but we also have other sessions that are geared towards students and families just trying to learn more about the process. We know that a lot of us, our students are coming to us with not a lot of information about what and how to go through the college planning process or the career planning process. So we're trying to put pieces in place to, for them to learn a little bit more. Um, we do have some sessions that are going to be happening at the same time that we have the college fair. Um, these sessions will include information about playing sports in college, getting involved in high school, um, even how to do the FAFSA, how to apply for scholarships. We have tons of information on those items as well as the college fair that will have approximately 70 colleges on campus. Wow. Absolutely. Why is it so important for kids going into junior high and high school to start thinking about their college careers? 
Absolutely. We, we are finding that as each year passes, we're getting even more early in the process starting. Um, in fact, this year we even bumped our FAFSA up so that the start date for the FAFSA is October. So that means everything kind of has to move up a little bit more. So we want our students to engage as early as possible to see college as an option for them. Um, so that when they start high school, they've got a plan in place. They're starting to think about keeping doors of opportunity open to them so that when they get to be seniors, they get lots to select from. Well, March 27th, 5 to 7.30 p.m. at mm -hmm. Thomas Jefferson High School. Absolutely. And if you'd like to learn more information, you can go to uh, www dot two college fairs dot org and it's all one word and it's go to college go fairs. to college fairs dot org, org. Okay. and they can pre-register and what that will do is it will give them a printout um, that will give them a scan code so that when they go to the college fairs they can actually sit and talk to the colleges rather than have to sit and write their their demographics down they can actually just get scanned and sit and talk with the the representatives that'll be there Carla thank you so much for joining me today thanks for having me Coming up after the break, we head over to the Iowa School for the Deaf to see how the deaf community is creating their own March Madness. Stay tuned. At the Council Bluffs Recycling Center, we're proud of the effort our community makes to help keep Council Bluffs beautiful by participating in our curbside recycling program. Here are some tips to make sure your recyclables are accepted. If you're confused about plastics, we can help. Numbers one through five plastic food and beverage containers are acceptable. Usually, the recycling triangle and the number inside are located on the bottom of containers. Items we don't take include number six and seven plastics, styrofoam, or bags of any sort, although we encourage recycling plastic bags inside local grocery stores. Please be sure to check the calendar in our annual mailer or on our website to find out what items will be picked up each week. Blue Week items for your curbside bin include paper, cardboard, and glass containers. Green Week items for your curbside bin include plastic food and beverage containers, tin and aluminum containers, and tin foil. Thank you for helping us keep Counts of Bluffs beautiful. Hey everybody! Heart disease affects one in every three women in America, but you can fight back. There's no time to lose. Mothers, sisters, daughters, families, and friends, it's time to shout louder, stand stronger, and demand change. Let's go! To the Batmobile! Dang it. To the invisible jet! Dang it. Together, we can put an end to heart disease. It's time to go red for women. I could use your help. Yeah! Learn more from the American Heart Association at www.goredforwomen.org. This new mom is struggling to get the skates just right. Now she's holding on for dear life. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. When you think about March, what usually comes to mind? Spring weather, it doesn't get dark until 9 o'clock. Or how about this one, the start of NCAA March Madness? Well, MAD, Midwest Athletic Association of the Deaf, puts on their own madness every year as well. And in 2017, the Iowa School for the Deaf plays host to that tournament. The madness continues. Wow, this tournament is in March. So it's become a tough March Madness thing. And a chance to reunite with old friends on the hardwood. It's a unique opportunity. It's a great place for um, people to get together. March 10th and 11th, the Iowa School for the Deaf hosts the annual Mad Basketball Tournament for men and women, a tradition in its 72nd year. Since the first tournament in 1946, we've grown a lot in our community here in the West, Midwest region. And every year we get a different, diverse group of people who are deaf, hard of hearing, play with us. MAD is a nonprofit alumni organization that represents institutions for the deaf from nine different states across the Midwest. <laughs> ISD graduate Kylie Peterson has played in the women's tournament for three years now. She says the event is something she looks forward to every year. The socialization opportunities that we get when we have deaf communities from other states get together from the Midwest is um, really nice. We get to see our old friends, we get to meet new people, so it's a cool opportunity. Barb Nacrelli, president of MAD, believes this tournament is beneficial for many reasons. It's important for 
our deaf athletic community to get, to get to get together, compete against each other because it's a rare opportunity. You're not able to participate in other tournaments at this level with the same level of communication. And that's a bigger challenge, but here you get a little bit more enjoyment out of it. It's a unique setting featuring a unique bond between strangers and friends. <laughs> Oh. The competition is fierce, but so too is the unspoken relationship with everyone involved. You have people that come in that you know are willing to learn sign language, and even the refs here um, have been learning some sign language while they've been refing our games, and so that's a fun opportunity to see that collaboration happen. There's no age restriction for those participating in MAD competitions, other than you have to have graduated from one of the region deaf institutions. Kylie Peterson says that after this tournament, her team will be heading to the national tournament in Washington, D.C. If you'd like to learn more about the Midwest Athletic Association for the Deaf, head over to their website at maad.org. Attention all 5K runners. If you are planning on participating in the annual Shamrock Shuffle 5K Fun Run Saturday, March 11th, the event has been postponed due to weather. Officials have rescheduled this event for the following Saturday, March 18th. Shamrock Shuffle will take place in the historic part of Council Bluffs. Participants are still very much encouraged to dress up in your favorite St. Patrick's Day attire. The race will begin at 9 a.m. on the 100 block. The course will take you through the Rails West Railroad Museum, around historic Bayless Park, and back to the 100 block. Once runners cross the finish line, there will be more fun activities to enjoy. To learn more information about the annual Shamrock Shuffle 5K Fun Run, head to the Council Bluffs website at councilbluffs-ia.gov. March 10th marks the second week of Lent season. Hundreds of people line up at Queen of Apostles Catholic Church to partake in the annual fish fry. This event has been a tradition for the church for quite some time. Grand Knight Mike Ricks is a big part of this event. People are finding out we, we've got it, we're listed in papers, we've got uh, signs around town, uh, word of mouth. We have people come from Omaha that have heard about us. People come to the fish fry for more than just the food. Fun is also on the menu. There's music, raffle giveaways, and more. The fish fry will be held every Friday till April 13th at the end of Lent season. For your Council Bluffs News, I'm Haley Hughes. Still to come on Council Bluffs News. Plenty of furry friends are still looking for a good home. We'll meet them in our Pets of the Week. And a look at our events calendar to wrap up the show. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. Hey, I'm Anderson Cooper. As a parent, you want to make sure that your child knows how to deal with bullying when they see it happening. And chances are they want to help, but they don't really know how. I'll teach them that the best thing to do is calmly walk away, find a teacher or other adult, and speak up and do your part. Be that adult they can talk to and trust will listen. Join me to help stop bullying. Go to stopbullying.gov to find out more. Mills and welcome into Pets of the Week. We're going to start off with Molly and her file number is 22527. She's a five-year-old shepherd mix and she's a wonderful dog. She's very timid, very frightened, so she needs a warm loving family to bring her out of her shell. She is good with other dogs her size on her own terms. A slow introduction would be great, so bring yours down for a meet and greet and see if they get along. Again, this is Molly, file 22527. This is Macy and Max. They're a bonded pair and they're an amazing little duo. Macy's file number is 11707 
and she is nine years old. And Max's file number is 11705, and he's 10 years old. They are a bonded pair. They're a lot of fun. They love to go on walks together and spend all their time together. They're just amazing, friendly little dogs. Again, this is Max and Macy, file 11707 and 11705. This beautiful girl is Matilda, and her file number is 22027. She's just under two years old, so she is a very petite cat, but she does like to explore. She's very active, and she's very cuddly. Again, this is Matilda, file 22027. This sweetheart is Gigi, and her file number is 22626. She's a five-year-old Duluth Torty with short hair, and she's very sweet and very nice. She does get along great with other cats, not so much dogs, but she's very friendly, and we are looking to get her into a great and loving home. And if you're interested in any of the pets that you've seen on today, please come down to 1020 Railroad Avenue in Council Bluffs to Midlands Humane Society. We currently have 23 dogs on the adoption floor and over 30 cats looking for forever homes. Time now for our weekly events calendar. Enter a world where you can relive your favorite Disney movie characters. Disney on Ice, Dare to Dream is coming to the Mid-America Center March 16th through the 19th. You'll see famous characters such as Tinkerbell, Ariel, Rapunzel, Cinderella, and Belle, and best of all, you'll get to see Anna and Elsa with, of course, Olaf from the movie Frozen. Tickets are on sale now starting at $15 per person. To learn more about Disney on Ice, head over to DisneyOnIce.com. If you don't feel like watching Disney characters on ice, then how about watching a Marvel movie with your significant one? You can head on over to the Council Bluffs Public Library March 18th from 2 to 4 p.m. and watch the newest Marvel movie, Doctor Strange, starring Benedict Cumberbatch. Best part about attending this event is you get free popcorn as well. To learn more, head over to the Public Library's website at councilbluffspubliclibrary.org. Attention trivia lovers, how much history do you know about the Council Bluffs School District? Sunday, March 19th from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. at the center, guests will enjoy an hour of fun facts they never knew about the first hundred years of CB schools. A special guest will be hosting the trivia game along with various artifacts from old AL. This fun evening is being sponsored by the Historical Society of Pottawatomie County. The event is absolutely free as well. To learn more, head over to thehistoricalsociety.org. Thank you for tuning in and watching this week's Council Bluffs News. As always, CBTV is very eager to hear your feedback. If you'd like to send us your questions or comments, email them to cbtv at iwcc.edu, or you can call us at 712-325-3312. Or you can find us on social media. We're on Facebook and Twitter. Just search CBTV17. And of course, keep it right here for the latest scores and updates for local sports in your community by tuning in to the Bluff Sports Zone with J.J. Davis. For your Council Bluffs News, I'm Aaron Zach.